If you're good at being calm and reassuring in a crisis, have a strong desire to help those in need and enjoy physically demanding work, think about becoming an emergency medical technologist, paramedic, or EMTP. EMTPs assess injury or illness and provide medical treatment. For example, they may maintain airways with intubation and operate life support equipment in ambulances or aircraft transporting patients to medical facilities for further care. To learn more, we spent some time with an EMTP. I'm Travis Laidlaw. I'm an emergency medical technologist paramedic, also known as an EMTP, or also referred to at times as just a paramedic. A uh, paramedic is someone who responds to emergency calls, uh, drives around in the ambulance, and we can respond from anything for traumatic injuries, car accidents, or medical emergencies, um, anything you may dial 911 for. I, I think I always did want to be a paramedic, back as far as I can remember anyway as a kid. Did a few random jobs prior to doing this, and once I decided to settle into a career, I started right into the education process and made my way through. There's actually a variety of different places a paramedic can work. Um, you can work in all different uh, rural communities as a paramedic working on an ambulance. There's also standbys you can do at uh, oil field sites, doing medical standby camp jobs. You can fly into some remote communities and work as a paramedic out of a clinic in some fly-in only communities. Um, and of course working for major municipalities like uh, at a higher call volume working on an actual ambulance. To become a paramedic, you need your high school education. Then you move into the St. John's Ambulance Program and get your basic first aid and your CPR. Then you will acquire your EMR certification, that's the Emergency Medical Responder. Then you'll acquire your EMTA certification, Emergency Medical Technician Ambulance, and then you become uh, EMTP. My duties and responsibilities as a paramedic include a lot of things, uh, being a patient advocate, I mean maintaining a good level of safety and transporting patients and then stuff as simple as making sure your unit has all the equipment required to do a call and everything's organized and cleaned appropriately uh, based on the situation. Typical day we generally get to work uh, whenever your shift starts. Mine starts around 8 o'clock so we'll meet up with my partner Ronnie we'll find out which unit we're assigned to, walk over to it and make sure all the equipment's there, oxygen and uh, everything do a good truck check and from there we may get to relax for a bit, do uh, station duties, some cleaning, check your email for work, um, and then uh, the other days you get days where you don't get to do anything. You check your truck and you're on to calls for the entire day. Hey man, how you doing? Good, man. how are you? So we always work with a partner, um, either whether it be a, another paramedic or an emergency medical technician. We always work together. And having a good, reliable partner is really important, someone you can openly communicate with, someone you know fairly well, and someone you can count on. A typical call might be chest pain and a call like that will respond to their uh, a person's residence or place of business wherever they may be having the emergency. Uh, get on scene, get a general history, do some vital signs, just a baseline information to figure out exactly what's going on. I'll do a heart tracing. Sometimes we'll have to transmit that heart tracing to a cardiologist to assist us in giving us a treatment plan and deciding whether it is a, a heart problem or could be a number of other different problems. From there we'll load someone onto the stretcher, load them into the back of the ambulance and again continue to treat and get more history on the way to the hospital. Some of the things we might do in the back uh, during transport with a chest pain patient could be using like nitro spray or a number of different medications. Aspirin is really common uh, and sometimes we'll use morphine to alleviate that pain. And again there's a number of different treatments uh, we do give en route. Well, there's a lot of safety equipment we are supplied with. Um, we're always supposed to be wearing safety glasses at all times. On certain calls where people might be coughing or being exposing a lot of particles, we'll wear masks and uh, place masks on patients just to protect ourselves and other people as well. Uh, if we're ever doing motor vehicle collisions, we always wear traffic vests so we're quite visible. And, of course, gloves on every call. I think some of the skills required to be a paramedic are having the ability to adapt and stay calm in really emergent situations. For me, I find that's the most important thing is being able to keep kind of a calm, cool head when things are going a little bit crazy and when things are obviously quite emergent. And if you have a lot of different situations, never two calls are the same, so you always have to be kind of on your toes. As a paramedic, 
personality wise, you know, you really want to be someone who has good people skills, the ability to talk to people and the ability to make someone feel confident in what you're doing. This job does end up being quite a physical job and being in shape is really important. You do a lot of heavy lifting. Maintaining a good level of health is really important if you want any longevity in this job. The shifts vary from place to place depending on where you're working. A really common one happens to be you work four days on and you have four days off after and your hours will generally be two 10 or 12 hour day shifts and then two 12 or 14 hour night shifts. But I really don't mind because we get four days off. It's a good, works out really nicely. You're able to have a lot of time off to do what you want to do. Myself, I really enjoy jogging. Started a platoon jogging group here at work actually and we've been able to get a lot of people out getting more active and it's a good experience to get people out and doing that. After you've been uh, working as a paramedic for a little while, there are different roles you can take on. There are superintendent roles or supervisor roles and after that there's obviously management positions and uh, different areas you probably require a little more education for but there's always some room for advancement. What I find most rewarding about this job is just the fact that we are helping people. It's something you can feel good about, especially when you get a call where you really did make a difference in someone's life, you know you're actually taking part in that and I think that's it's a pretty positive thing. I'd encourage someone who has um, taken an interest in this field to do a lot of research, um, even arrange a ride along, something to give you a good idea as to what this job's actually all about. I'm really happy about my career choice as a paramedic. It's uh, a perfect career for me. I really enjoy the, uh, the fact that I'm helping people every day. My job is different every day and you know, sometimes you actually feel like you're making a difference. And I, I find that to be fantastic. To become an emergency medical technologist paramedic, you will need training in a program approved by the Alberta College of Paramedics and must already be a Registered Emergency Medical Technician, or EMT. To become an EMT, you must be a Registered Emergency Medical Responder, or EMR. If the occupation of Emergency Medical Technologist Paramedic interests you, there's more information available, including educational requirements and salary ranges in the Occupational Profiles on ALICE. You may also be interested in the related occupations of Emergency Medical Responder emergency medical technician or firefighter. Learn more on the ALICE website and make the most of your future. Visit us at alice.alberta.ca